Prisoners in Russia's southern Volgograd region have seized control of a prison and taken hostages. Three prison employees have been killed and several others were injured, telegram channels reported. Three prisoners were involved in the hostage taking and at least one prison employee was killed, according to emergency services. The incident occurred at the IK-19 Surovikino penal colony, located around 120 kilometers west of the region's capital city Volgograd. The prison houses over 1,200 inmates. Several inmates seized staff at a meeting of the colony's disciplinary committee, TASS news agency reported, quoting prison service as saying without specifying the number of hostages or hostage takers. An unverified photo shared by news channels on the Telegram message app purported to show inmates at the penal colony standing above a bloodied prison guard. Baza Telegram channel reported that hostage taking was linked to the Islamic State terrorist group. It claimed that the inmates have demanded $2 million and a helicopter and forced one of the hostages to appeal to Vladimir Putin with a request to fulfill their demands. Five hostages have been able to flee. This is the second hostage situation to have taken place in a southern Russian prison this summer. Ukrainian kamikaze drones attacked the Russian Savaslika airfield on August 16. Three Russian aircraft were destroyed there. This was reported by RBC Ukraine with reference to sources. According to sources, on August 16, as a result of the operation of the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense, a kamikaze drone strike was carried out on the Savaslika military airfield, which is located in the Nizhny Novgorod region of the Russian Federation. According to military intelligence sources, the attack destroyed a MiG-31K-I aircraft, two IL-76 aircraft and damaged about five aircraft, probably MiG-31K-Is. Before this, another attack was carried out on the airfield on August 13. As a result, the fuel and lubricants train was hit and the MiG-31K-I aircraft was damaged. According to Space Intelligence, at the time of the attack on August 13, there were 11 MiG-31K-I aircraft, an IL-76 aircraft, and 5 Mi-8 and Mi-24 helicopters at the specified airfield. The Savaslika airfield is a military airfield located in the Nizhny Novgorod region of Russia, near the village of the same name. The Russian Federation uses it to train aviation specialists, test new types of aviation equipment, and train military pilots. Various types of combat aircraft, including fighters and bombers, are based there, as well as training aviation units. The airfield is known for conducting special tests of new aviation technologies and equipment, and for servicing aircraft from various military units. fire control over key supply arteries. The Glushkovsky district is increasingly isolated and efforts to use pontoon bridges as a workaround are proving ineffective as these are more vulnerable and less efficient than fixed bridges. The Russian forces in Glushkovsky find themselves with limited time to retreat to the northern bank of the Seam River. Despite this, the Russian command is attempting to move logistics and reinforcements, further complicating the situation, Kovalenko pointed out. The Ukrainian operation is opening a path to Rilsk, just 15 kilometers from key logistical hubs. Ukrainian forces could potentially cut off these hubs with fire control without needing a full-scale city assault. Rilsk, divided by the Seam River with only two bridges, presents a significant vulnerability for the Russian forces. By September the 6th, one month after the beginning of the Kursk operation, it is anticipated that Ukrainian forces will control up to 2,000 square kilometers in the Kursk region, greatly expanding their operational area. Meanwhile, Russian forces may still be struggling to make significant progress in Pokrovsk, the expert added. 
Putin faces a critical decision, continue focusing on Pokrovsk, which could lead to greater losses in Kursk, or shift his strategy. The expected bet on Pokrovsk could exacerbate Russian losses in Kursk, outweighing any minor gains since early 2024. Ukraine's strategy for 2024, primarily defensive with selective counterattacks, aims to exhaust the enemy rather than hold territory. Since August the 6th, the strategy has shifted. For every square kilometer of Ukrainian land captured, Ukrainian forces are advancing multiple kilometers into Russian territory. While the Russian army might manage to replenish the personnel losses, they are increasingly struggling with territorial losses.